Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about five myth understandings that kill your business growth. Myth understandings. And that's not just because I like to sound like I got a lift by saying myth understandings. <laughs> it's because these misunderstandings or rather myth understandings are undergirded by exactly that myth. And so myths are false presuppositions, false and erroneous beliefs that simply are not true. And believe it or not, other industries and other occupations don't have a corner on those myths. The mortgage industry, frankly, is filled with these myths, and most mortgage pros have no clue that that's the case. So I'm going to walk you through some of these myth understandings that I believe have the most potent and acute impact on your bottom line negatively. In other words, they will erode and corrode and undermine your income potential and your power to produce more than any other myth understandings that uh, may be unwittingly cause you to put the brakes on in your productivity and production. So that being said, let's get to it and do it, shall we? Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to highlight this is because I believe that what you think about comes about and it's not a matter of potential as to how high your income goes and how much you're able to produce in the life you're able to create. It's what you believe about your potential, what you believe about your business, what you believe about yourself that will often dictate and determine how high you can take your life, your income, your business, and ultimately your fulfillment and your purpose of your ability to fulfill why you're here. The reason why you're here on earth is often a big part of you unlocking and unleashing yourself into the best version of yourself. But if you're shackled under erroneous presuppositions and faulty premises, that's not going to help you soar, right? It's going to keep you like a caged animal, like a caged eagle that is meant to soar, that's meant to fly, and that is meant to soar to higher heights in your life, your business. But if you've got a mindset or beliefs that shackle you, then you remain in the cage. I don't want that for you. You don't want that for you. As uh, the incredibly life transformative Jesus once said, as you believe, so it will be done unto you. And such few syllables, but every syllable has so much power to enter our heart and mind with the truth that indeed what we believe will forge our life. And it reminds me of a really famous story, actually, by the late and great Earl Nightingale. You may have heard it. The story of the pump pumpkin farmer who was walking through his pumpkin fields in the early stage of planting. And the pumpkins were just small at that point. And I was, as he was making the rounds, he noticed something glint in the corner of his eye. And as he stooped down to inspect, he noticed that it was a glass jar. Perhaps someone had thrown into his farm just as they were driving by from a motorist. Maybe they threw it into the garden. And so he inspected it and thought, that's kind of interesting, and came up with a crazy idea just in the spur of the moment to stick one of his little baby pumpkins inside the glass jar. And at that point, it fit in because it was just a baby pumpkin. And he was very careful to fit it in there without breaking the stem. And so he put it down and he went on his business and weeks went by, then months went by. And lo and behold, it was harvest season. He'd forgotten about his little experiment until he had stumbled upon it when the pumpkins now were much, much bigger. And lo and behold, he discovers this runt pumpkin stuck in this glass jar. 
the pumpkin was about one fourth the size of a full grown pumpkin. And it fit perfectly into the dimensions of the glass jar. You see, it was imprisoned by that glass jar such that it could only grow to the outer limits of that jar. And there it was stuck. And how many, how many of us find ourselves contained, imprisoned by the glass jar of our own thinking, our own beliefs, our own mindset, our own paradigms, prisoners of our own paradigms. And we don't even realize it because when we're inside the bottle, it's hard to see the label. It's hard to see those blind spots, which is a big reason why I wanted to share this with you, because there's areas of our thinking that we don't even realize are holding us back until we have someone else shine the light in these areas. All of a sudden we can see it. We can see it clearly. And all of a sudden it is revealed. The light of insight is now able to cast light on it such that we can see it. So I hope you guys will simply just hold space for opening up your awareness to what might be there for you that may or may not be holding you back and just be willing to entertain the possibility that some of these things may be holding you back unwittingly and unknowingly. And once you actually have awareness of them, it will change everything for you. All of a sudden now you have a new choice. You have a choice to create something new because you have newfound awareness. So without further ado, let's dive in. The first myth understanding I want to highlight is the myth that you're in the mortgage business. You know, if someone was to ask you, what business are you in? You're going to obviously tell them I'm in the mortgage business. And it kind of goes without saying, right? You're in the mortgage business. But unfortunately, most people operate their business as if that's just the business they're in is doing mortgages. The problem is if you believe and you see yourself as being in the mortgage business, and if that's your identity and that's the primary role that you have to do mortgages, being in the mortgage business, chances are you're going to leave a shit ton of money on the table because the real business you're in is the marketing business. You're in the relationship business, you're in the sales business, but most importantly, you are in the marketing business. Why do I say most importantly? Because marketing is about bringing in the leads. And if you don't know how to generate the leads, you're not going to generate the apps. If you don't know how to generate the apps, you're not going to get the closings. You don't get the closings, you're not going to get the cash. You don't get the cash, you're out of business. So leads are the lifeblood of your business, right? And if you don't see yourself as being in the lead generation business, the marketing business, chances are you're going to have skinny kids at worst, or at best, you're going to severely limit your income potential, and perhaps at the very, very worst, worst, you're going to be out of business. And I can tell you right now, a lot of mortgage professionals have been dropping like flies as of late because of this market shift with hyper competition, margin, margin compression, everyone and their dog chasing after the same realtors, inflation, rising rates, et cetera. This is uh, not a lollipops, unicorn, sunny skies type of market. This is a challenging market. You know it. I know it. So we need to make sure that we have all our guns a blazing. And make sure you're armed and dangerous with the right approach. And the right approach will always be inextricably linked with understanding what business you are in. You are in the marketing business first and foremost. Now, once you understand you're in the marketing business, it changes everything because it changes what you focus your time on, what you invest your time, your energy, your money into. It dictates what your schedule and your calendar looks like, your priority list, your to-do list, everything gets skewed, shifted, and molded based on your identity of what business you're in. And if you're in the mortgage business, you're going to be pushing paper and you're going to be chasing the trivial and you're going to be working on the urgent and important versus the important but not urgent. You're going to work on the a vital few versus the vital, trivial many. So there's a shift that happens when you see yourself in the mortgage business, you start to understand that indeed that needs to be your top priority every single day. 
So you're going to spend time. We call it the hour of power here on Planet Prosper, where you have time every day to focus on rainmaking instead of paper pushing. You have time every day to attract top producing realtors to make you their exclusive and to have a formula, a recipe, a blueprint for attracting versus chasing. So the sophisticated marketer, because they understand they're in the marketing business first and foremost, they build sophistication, they build prowess, they become more muscular in their marketing acumen because they understand that's the main business they're in such that they're able to attract better quality borrowers that are hot for what they they for what they've got for what they've got easy for me to say they're hot for what they've got and they're open to uh, also investing in themselves both with time and money to become even more sophisticated as a marketer because again that is the heartbeat of your business right if you're really good at lead generation you're going to have lots of clients. You're going to have lots of rave reviews. You're going to have lots of opportunity for repeat and referral business. And you're going to have a superpower to bring in business left, right, and center because that is the most profitable skill in your business, attracting clients. What are the best clients? The best clients always will be repeat and referral business from your database, as well as getting referrals from top producing realtors. Those are the people who have the highest capacity to send you the most amount of business most often. And yet how many mortgage professionals actually know how to do this stuff? How many mortgage professionals actually invest time, energy, and money in becoming a black belt marketer and developing a high level of sophistication in that area? Very, very few. Why? Because they think they're in the mortgage business. They don't realize they're in the marketing business. So if all you do is just own that as your identity and you make that shift in how you see yourself and the business you're in, you're going to notice a massive improvement in your ability to attract loans, attract clients, attract partners, and your sophistication as a marketer is going to accelerate leaps and bounds because everything else is going to be a distant second place priority. You're no longer going to treat your lead generation and your marketing activities as a luxury, an optional luxury. You're going to treat it as a mandatory must because that's the business you're in. There is nothing that's more potently profitable than that. And you know it to your core such that your priority list and your schedule is conformed to that high level of weightiness of how important it is to you and your profitability and your success. So I think I've beaten that dead horse. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? The next one, the next myth understanding is the market dictates your income. So you obviously are affected by the market. Everyone is in this industry, right? I'm not saying that it doesn't influence or impact your pipeline, your productivity, your pro production. The problem is a lot of people in this business, they use the market as the scapegoat for why their income is has been at the same level for years and years and years, and they've never been able to break through that glass ceiling. Or the fact that their income has dropped by 50 to 70% over the last year or so as the market has shifted. Or they use it as an excuse to hold their breath and basically sit in the passenger seat versus the driver's seat, waiting for the phone to ring versus making the phone ring. And they're just simply in hope prison, hoping that things get back to sunny skies, hoping that things are going to get better, hoping that the market will become more congenial. The problem with that is hope is great if you're in prison, right? But it doesn't make for a good marketing strategy, does it? Because hope is not enough. We don't want you hoping for sunny skies because the problem is the market's always going to be in flux. We can't control the market. We can't tr uh, control interest rates or inflation. We can't control inventory. We can't control any of that. What we can control is what are you going to spend your time on Monday to Friday or however many days you work during a work week? And what are you going to have as your top priority in terms of allocating time, energy, and money, what are you going to be focusing on day to day to make the cash register ring, to bring in borrowers, to bring in partners, to bring in more repeat and referral business? What are you going to do to 
really take control of what you're in control of. You're not in control of the market, interest rates, the economy. You're not in control of any of those outside factors. But what you are in control over is your own thoughts, your own beliefs, your own emotions, your own actions, what you say and what you do. So the question is, what can you do to win in any market, not just a fair weather market? That's like the million dollar question of the hour, isn't it? What can you do to win in any market, not just a fair weather market? And I submit to you, what you can do is cultivate and condition yourself to have champion level routines that allow you to win in any market. Champion level routines are things like early to bed, early to rise, makes you healthy, wealthy, and wise, said originally by the late and great ben- Benjamin Franklin, right? Still as true today as it was the first day it was uttered. So if we want champion level results, we've got to have champion level routines. The fastest way to frustration is to have champion level ambitions but chump level routines, right? To have million dollar ambitions, but trailer park habits, that doesn't work. So what does that look like for you? What time do you go to bed at night? What time do you get up in the morning? Are you winning your morning? Or are you just coasting in the morning? Or are you just sleeping in the morning? Are you sleeping in and just waking up and diving into your email? Or do you have a routine to fuel your rocket, to fill your cup so you're feeling on point and you're feeling powerful and peaceful and productive? Because when we feel great, we tend to do great. When we feel in the dumps because we're looking at all the bad news, we're seeing that rates are still high. When we're focusing on all the things we can't control and we feel miserable because we're griping and we're complaining and we're moaning and we're sniveling, we get our knickers in a knot, don't we? Why? Because where our attention goes, our energies flow and results show. When we focus on shit, we feel shitty, right? That's just how it works. So having champion level routines helps us to get champion level results because we step into the champion version of ourselves and it allows us to focus on the things that really matter and to bring a potency of productivity to those things because we got pep in our step, our sparkle in our eye, we got peace in our heart. And when we have peace in our heart, here's the truth, our peace is our power. So when we feel that sense of peace and we are focused on the things that are most potently profitable and productive, it allows us to be more profitable and productive versus scrolling on Facebook as a coping mechanism because we feel down and out miserable because the income has been tanking and we're having to pull money out of savings. And there's coping mechanisms to that kind of stuff, right? We start to cope with either drinking more or cope by scrolling on social media, or we cope by commiserating with other people that are getting their asses kicked. So at least we know we're not the only one. Misery loves company, right? All those things are not going to help us show up in our power and create powerful results. So the myth understanding around the market dictating our income is that it flies in the face of the real truth, the deeper truth, the more profitable truth. And that more profitable truth is that it's not the market, it's your marketing. It's not the market, it's your marketing. Once you really own that to your core, that it's not the market, it's your marketing, all of a sudden you start to take control. You take the helm. Instead of sitting in the driver's in, in the passenger seat, you take the driver's seat. Instead of waiting for the phone to ring, you make the phone ring. Instead of drifting, you drive. So it's a shift in mindset that shifts your heart set, that shifts how you do what you do and what you're focusing on and the results you get. But the pivot point is understanding it's not the market. The market will do what it does. It's about your marketing. It's about your mindset. It's about using this adversity and turning it into opportunity. It's about saying, bring it on. This is a challenging season right now. Bring it on. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. It's about having an embrace of the challenge where you say, I turn these challenges into opportunities and I eat them for freaking breakfast. Bring it, baby. I'm ready for this. This is my best time. This is when I shine 
with the brightest light when the proverbial shit hits the fan and the storm hits. That's when I do my best work. That's when I take market share. That's when I leave the competition in the dust. Bring it on, baby. Notice the energetic frequency of that versus sucks to be me. The market's really bad right now. Things are really slow. You know, it's terrible out there. The market's terrible. Well, yeah, that may be the case, but is that really the truth you want to expand in your mind and heart? Is that the truth you want to magnify? Is that the truth that you want to live from? Is that empowering you to create the life you want? Is that empowering you to live your best life? I don't think so. Is that empowering you to win in any market? I don't think so. Is that empowering you to leave your competition in the dust? I don't think so. So that shift from the market sucks and the market dictates my income and I'm a victim of the market versus a new truth that allows you now to own your power instead of giving your power away. Because if you want to live your best life, you can't afford to give your power away is it's not the market, it's your marketing. So just consider that little nuance makes a big difference in your energetic frequency, in your emotional state, in your emotional home, in your resourcefulness, in the quality of your action, in the quantity of your action, and ultimately the quantity and quality of your results. So these are little hinges that swing open big doors to big breakthroughs. The third myth understanding I want to highlight today is the higher your income, the harder you have to work. People will often say when I ask them, how much do you you want to make that would let you know you're winning? How much do you want to make that would get you doing the happy dance? They say, well, I don't want to be greedy. So they associate making a lot of money to either being greedy. And by the way, if you associate making a lot of money to being greedy, what's the likelihood you're ever going to have a lot of money? Very low because you want to be that greedy mofo that's just coveting money and hoarding money and greedy, right? That's corrupting your soul with greed because you have money. Here's the truth. The best way to help the poor is not be one of them. So why not have a lot of money so you can be blessed to be a blessing? Why not have a lot of money so you can help a lot of people even in your absence, even in the absence of your physical presence, you can bless a lot of people because you can use money to touch hearts, change lives, and help people even when you're physically present. You can send money around the world to liberate kids from the shackles of human trafficking. You can help underprivileged youth. You can help your church. You can invest in the kingdom of God. You can do all these amazing things that bear abundant fruit and bring light, love, and leadership into this world and cast out the darkness in this world. Because you have money, you're blessed to be a blessing. So that's one aspect of it is like, hey, having a bunch of money is not greedy. It just means that you're now a conduit to help a lot of people. And it's not just to increase your standard of living, but to increase your standard of giving. So why not get rich? Why not step into the best version of yourself to get rich? Why not learn how to win in any market so that you can help a lot of people? Start with your family. So you can be a beacon of light in the darkness for your family. So you can help a lot of people in your family. So you can be an example worthy of emulation for your kids and your kids' kids and even your distant relatives to be that one, that one that changed your family line, your family heritage, your family tree, because you decided to rise up and win and not play a victim to the market and not play a victim to circumstance because you decided to rise up and say, everything's going to be different because I refuse to lose. I refuse to be a victim to circumstance, a victim to poverty, a victim to the market, a victim to lack limitation. And that's the key, guys, is to understand that we have an opportunity to be light in the darkness. And having a lot of money allows us to do a lot of great things, to help a lot of people. And that's one aspect of the limiting myth understanding that I'm unpacking around the higher your income, the more you have to work is this baggage around greed. But the other baggage around having a lot of money that often comes with it is, well, I don't want to have to work crazy hours. I don't want to go after making half a million or a million dollars. That's too much work. I'm going to have to work 80 hours a week. I'm going to have no time with my family. Well, that's probably true if you keep doing it the way you're doing it. 
if you're the chief cook and bottle washer wearing all the hats, if you're, you know, the, uh, the one guy or gal doing everything, then yeah, that's probably true. But who says that you have to do everything as your income climbs? Who says that you can't delegate to top talent so that they're managing the minutia so you can focus on rainmaking? paper pushing? Who says that you have to do it all yourself? What if the higher you want to earn, the more you're going to delegate such that you're working smarter, not harder, such that you have more freedom, not less. You have more fun, not less. More free time, not less. Who says you can't make half a million to a million plus a year while working 20, 25, 30 hours a week? Who says? Well, anyone who tells you that, chances are they got stinking thinking. They need a checkup from the neck up because that person doesn't understand a key aspect of business, and that is leverage. Leverage is getting more results with less time, energy, money, and stress. Leverage is about putting policy, procedure, protocol, systems, and people in place so you can expand your value in the marketplace without expanding your workload. And so I just invite you to consider the higher you want to expand your income, the more you need to expand your leadership and your business sophistication such that as you enact leverage with policy, procedure, protocol, systems, and people and team, you're going to find that as you get more sophisticated as a business builder, as a team builder, as a leader, you're able to earn more while working the same or less and with a whole lot less stress if you have the top talent you need and the right systems in place that you need. So yeah, there's a lot of needles to thread there, but it's possible. It's a learnable skill. And that's certainly a big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage pros hire us is to learn these skills because it's not something you can easily crack the code on by just doing a Google search, right? You can't just watch a free YouTube video, listen to a free podcast or read a free blog to figure this kind of stuff out, which is why we've been in business for 18 years, helping mortgage pros crack this code because it's not an easy code to crack. You can't just Google search it. So the third or rather the fourth area that really gets people uh, limited in their productivity. The fourth myth understanding is that it's easier to attract the lower producing realtors than the top dogs. Perhaps you've been think thinking that, feeling that, or that's been your experience. And for good reason, because when you go after the low producers, they pick up their phone because they're not busy and because they're really wanting someone to call them. They got nothing going on. They're twiddling their thumbs. They're happy to actually have someone call them. They feel like at least someone wants me. At least someone is interested in me. At least someone seen, deems me valuable enough to call me. So those who are doing no business, they're going to be easier to get on the phone. That's just par for the course. And so because of that, and because of the fact that these lower producers uh, are less sought after and the lower producers don't really have much going on, they can easily feel like, hey, those are the easier uh, you know, eggs to crack. Those are the easier partners to, uh, to bring on as, uh, as referral partners. So I'll just go after those. The problem is those are the guys that are working at Walmart right now. Those are the guys who are going back and selling solar now. Those are the, the, those are the guys who are going back to the nine to five prison right now because they're getting their asses kicked with this market shift. You know, those that were doing two, three deals a month last year, now they're going and working at uh, Walmart, Starbucks, or selling solar because all that income is just dried up as the rates have gone up and a lot of buyers have uh, really had their, uh, their ability to buy limited just due to the fact that it costs more to borrow than it did last year. And so a lot of buyers obviously are getting priced out of the market. So when you think about it, yeah, you can get more of these low producers on the phone, but does that really mean that it's easier not necessarily, because at the end of the day, why are we reaching out to these realtors to begin with? To get referrals, right? That's the whole point. We're not just calling them up just to, you know, shake hands and kiss babies and, you know, network and, and wag our jaw. We are connecting with them because the goal is to create a reciprocal win-win alliance partnership where they're sending you referrals, you're sending their, them referrals, where you're bringing value, reciprocal value to the table. Now, you're not going to have 
the ability to get one, two, three deals a month from someone who is doing a deal once every three to four, five, six months, obviously. You're going to get one, two, three deals a month from someone who's doing 20 to 50 transactions a year. Those are the ones you want to go after because you only need one of those to replace 10 to 20 of the bottom feeders, right? You can have 10 to 20 bottom feeders, the whiny, simply complaining, jelly donut eating, easy, easy for me to say, bottom feeders who hardly do any business. And they might send you a deal every three to six months. Or you can just have one top producer sending you one, two, three deals a month. And notice how much more elegant, how much more simple, how much more graceful, how much more fun that feels to just work with one rock star versus a bunch of bottom feeders that suck your battery, right? Those are the ones who are prone to micromanage you. Those are the ones who are prone to biting their nails because they're freaking out because their paycheck and their ability to pay the bills is hinging on that deal that you're doing for them. And so instead of just relaxing and trusting your expertise, they're calling you every five minutes, checking up and babysitting. So the top producers are more likely to relax because they've got plenty of deals. They don't have the ability to micromanage you. They don't have the desire nor the ability. They're too busy making money and making shit happen to do that. So again, top producers, more profitable, more consistent, and you do a great job and you reciprocate and you bring more value than anyone else to also be much more loyal to you from a standpoint of just being able to have an income source you can count on month after month, year after year. And that's ultimately what you want, right? Is more consistency with your income, more consistency with your pipeline. So you get 10 top producers sending you one, two deals a month. Now you're making freedom money. Now you're making surgeon money. Now you're making do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, anytime you want money, because you've got a solid stable of top producing realtors who are sending you all their business all the time. And they put you on their speed dial. They made you their exclusive. And you've been able to do that because you have a value proposition that allows you to do it. So when you have the right value proposition, it actually becomes a lot easier to attract top producers because top producers love a kick-ass value proposition. So it's not so much about their productivity or their production levels that determines whether they're hard or difficult. It really just determines, it's determined by how compelling is your overture? How compelling is your offer? I like to use the metaphor of cheese and whiskers because much like a mouse, if you want to catch a mouse, a mouse loves cheese. They hate whiskers, right? Because they know whiskers are attached to something that wants to eat them for breakfast. Easy for me to say breakfast, lunch, and dinner is called a cat. So we want to use the same approach here with realtors. We want to give them all cheese, no whiskers, which means you need to have the right overture where it's almost impossible to say no to because it's all cheese, no whiskers. Now, that's obviously another deeper conversation in terms of how you do that, but it's really about bringing value to the table. So for example, when you're reaching out to these top producing realtors, you're not going to offer great rates, great service. That's definitely not going to work. You know it and I know it. That's old hat. They expect that as a minimum expectation just to do business, right? That you would have great rates and great service. So that's not going to work. You're not going to want to offer leads because leads off the internet. I mean, that's a great way to just waste your time with fruitless toil and chase after a mountain of gravel just to find a few gold nuggets. That's definitely doing it the hard way, right? You don't want to just give them a bunch of shit leads off the internet because frankly, that's doing it the hard way. That's not going to help them work smarter. That's just getting them to work harder. You're not going to want to just call them up and say, hey, how was your weekend? You got any borrowers who need help getting pre-approved? That's not going to work either because most of these marketing companies and coaching companies out there are telling you to make the same you know, realtors your target market for 40 calls every Monday. So they're getting hammered every Monday by 40 loan officers hitting up the same realtors every Monday and there's no real value proposition. It's just like, hey, how'd your weekend go? You got any pre-approvals? It's like, dude, that's a replaceable commodity type of job. Like, You don't have to be special to do that. 
Now, if you have a way to actually bring in buyers, bring in sellers, if you have a way to actually bring them business and make their cash register ring with more zeros and commas, that's what's going to get their attention, right? If you can actually help them close more deals with less effort, that's what's going to get their attention. And that's precisely why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage pros hire us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com because that is not an easy thing to figure out how to do that. And we've been doing this now for 18 years, helping mortgage pros crack this code. So I hope that dispels that myth. Let's move on to the last one. The last one is myth understanding number five. You have to cold call 40 realtors every Monday and do five social posts a day to be successful. I don't know about you, but that gives me the gag reflex just thinking about that, doesn't it? It's like, seriously, cold calling 40 realtors every Monday and doing all these social posts five times a day, seriously? That's just, I'm getting tired. I'm getting a thumper just thinking about it. That just stresses me out just thinking about it. Why would you want to cold call realtors, number one, and grovel for business, number two, and play the bitch to these realtors, number three, chasing and begging and bribing? Yuck. And why would you want to just get a bunch of social posts out there? You hardly even get any likes, let alone that converting to leads. And how is that going to help you make freedom money when, if you've been doing that for any period of time, you notice that you can do that for weeks and not even get one solid qualified lead, not even one. So how is it that doing more of what clearly has not been proven to work is going to solve the problem? That's the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So I'm the bearer of good news for you, my friend. Number one, I empathize with your pain. If you're sick and tired of cold calling, I feel your pain on that. That sucks. That's definitely doing it the hard way. If you're sick and tired of doing social posts and all this you know, busy work, knowing that activity does not translate to productivity, I've got good news for you. There is a better way. And I do feel your pain on that because when you're on 100% commission, you eat what you, kill with, eat what you kill with no safety net. We don't have the luxury of just having activity. We need to translate it to productivity. Right. So the good news is, is there is a better way. And the better way is just the secret sauce to get top producing realtors to make you their exclusive. It's the shortest path to the cash. And you don't need to be doing five social posts a day. You could do one a day if you want, but it's not even mission critical at that. We provide that for our clients with high quality HD, HD videos and uh, all kinds of done for you emails so that we can stay in front of our you know social media following we can stay in front of our database of prospects clients and realtors like we do that for our clients but the real secret sauce is just having the skill the mindset and the skill set to be able to book appointments with top producing realtors at will that's the single most potently profitable skill you can ever have how to attract top producing realtors at will when it comes to booking appointments. Because if you want to have, uh, say, a $36,000 an income uh, a month income, that means you need to do, if you're making 3K a pop, that means you need to do about 10 deals a month. And if you're starting from scratch, that means you needed to have 10 solid partners sending you one loan a month or five solid partners sending you two loans a month. So we're not talking like, backflips, right? Five to 10 solid partners and it's done. But the question is, how do we get in front of these realtors? Well, once you learn the skill on how to get in front of them and how to get them eating out of your hand and how to flip the script so the realtor needs you more than you need them, it actually becomes fun because you're in the power position. You hold the cookie. You're no longer begging, groveling, or kissing butts. Now you're interviewing them versus the other way around. So if you're watching this, if you're listening to this and you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down, but I need to know how to do this because yeah, just talking about it is not enough. I want to learn how this actually works and how it can work for me. If that's you and you're on hundred percent commission with 70 basis points or higher comp as a residential licensed mortgage pro, and you want to add at least another hundred thousand dollars plus to your annual income, then I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. 
You'll get on the phone with myself or one of my consultants. We'll just have an honest conversation to see where you're at, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, we'll show you what that looks like. And if not, frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, you will leave that call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we're going to have some fun. Does that sound fair? I trust that it does. And so if that's you and you'd like to explore whether or not we can help you take your business to the next level and win in any market, not just a fair weather market, but in any market, and take the shortest path to the cash, to getting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive without the hell of cold calling, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys, that's all we got for today. I trust you got some insights some value, some good, healthy reminders. We often need reminding more than we need educating. So I hope this kind of reminded you of some things that perhaps you already knew and also perhaps gave you some new distinctions you hadn't thought of before. My name is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all.